Oh no, I need to charge. Uy, meron ka bang power bank dyan? Ay, meron ako nyan! Can I borrow? Anong kailangan mo? 5,000 milliamp? 10,000? 20,000? Meron ako nyan, galing pa sa raffle. Sige, kahit ano na lang. Pwedeng pahiram din ng cable. iPhone or Android? Type C. Ah, sige, Android. Eto. Um, this is micro USB. I need type C. Ay, ihay ang Android, Android na yan. Pare-pareho lang yan. Hey guys, Justin here of Yucatech and whenever you see a new smartphone with all these good features going for it, decent chipset, decent cameras, decent screen, decent battery life, but then you see the bottom. And it's still using a micro USB port. I mean, why does this standard even still exist when it's essentially antiquated? Shouldn't everything be using a Type-C port by now? Well, it's not that simple. Now, USB Type-C is great. I love it. Who doesn't? It allows for faster charging and data transfer. It has the potential to be a completely universal standard. And the symmetrical design is hella convenient. While that makes it objectively better than micro USB, that doesn't mean that micro USB wasn't revolutionary in its own right at a previous point in time. The micro USB form factor was developed by the USB Implementers Forum, a non-profit group that works to advance USB technology. It was developed in response to an even older standard, which we know as Mini USB. Mini USB back in the day was a nightmare of its own, suffering from a low insertion lifetime, meaning you could only plug and unplug it for so long until either the port or cable got loose, AF. It's also a thick port which left OEMs not being able to put out thinner devices. But nowadays, time has turned on micro USB as Type-C is slowly but surely becoming the universal standard, with not just phones using it but also laptops, tablets, wireless headphones, power banks, and even monitors adopting the standard. While this is the case, why do we still see new products with a micro USB port? A 2017 article from Android Authority makes a strong case about user familiarity and we definitely see this as well. As tech enthusiasts, naturally, we want to see progress. The decimation of a perceived antiquated standard and the substitution of a newer, better one. But for the rest of the user base, they could probably care less. Chances are, if somebody would still be holding out using a micro USB phone as well as other gadgets that use the same port, you'd find that it's easier said than done to convince them to replace their current devices, just so they can enjoy the glory of Type-C. Another big factor is supply. After the development of the micro USB standard, you could just imagine just how many of those ports and jacks, as in the individual small components, were manufactured. The fact that we still see new devices with micro USB indicates that there still is, in fact, a steady supply of the ports and jacks. But it's less to do so with burning out the supply until there's nothing left, such that Type-C completely takes over. It's related to how a device comes into fruition. Way before you see it on shelves, even way before it's announced or launched, manufacturers have already had the design plans for their devices several years prior. And they can't just change their minds on a whim. And even with new designs that started in the Type-C era, it poses a huge cost on manufacturer to completely redesign the chassis or PCB of an existing product just for one port, instead of making their upgrades elsewhere, largely keeping the previous physical design instead. For example, take a look at the original Sony WF-1000X wireless earbuds. The charging case used a micro USB cable. Then, take a look at its successor, the WF-1000X Mark III, as Sony took the charging port into consideration when coming up with a new design. If they didn't, there's a chance that it might have looked closer to the original as they could have used the same base chassis and PCB. So now the question is, when does micro USB completely die and Type-C completely take over? Well, it's already happening. 
More and more entry-level devices are launching with Type-C ports, and it's pretty much a no-brainer already when it comes to flagship and mid-rangers. As for smaller ticket items like headphones, power banks, even pod system vapes, these should, in theory, follow suit as well. Just as we don't see mini USB in the wild that often anymore. It's only a matter of time until micro USB gets the same fate. And who knows, what if there's a better standard than Type-C that comes along? And in the future, we're asking the question, why isn't Type-C dead? Only time will tell. But looking at the pattern over the last two decades, it's likely that will happen. So that's a wrap for this video, guys. I hope you learned something new. And do let me know in the comment section below if there are things that you hate or love with these USB standards. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Justin, and I'll see you in the next one.